Hey there, it's Elizabeth O'Brien from Grammar Revolution, where we help you teach and learn grammar the easy way with sentence diagrams. And today I am going to talk with you about the most useful book you probably don't own yet. When people want to know how to spell or use a word, they usually look up the word in a dictionary. And dictionaries are wonderful, but they don't necessarily address problematic words and they don't address other problematic grammatical constructions. Usage guides do. This is my usage guide. It's Garner's Modern American Usage. And usage guides address problematic or frequently misused words or phrases. And they tell you what is right or wrong, or somewhere in between, according to standard English. And standard English is the prevailing view among educated speakers and writers of what is right and wrong. For example, let's say you are unsure of whether it is between John and I or between John and me. Now that's something that you wouldn't be able to look up in a dictionary, but you would be able to find it in a usage guide. So my usage guide sits on my desk and gives me friendly advice as I'm writing telling me why I should or shouldn't use a word or phrase, or how widely accepted that word or phrase is right now. Brian Garner, the author of Garner's Modern American Usage, also wrote the grammar and usage section in the Chicago Manual of Style. And David and I, my husband David and I, were lucky enough to interview Brian Garner a few years ago when we were gathering footage for our grammar documentary and meeting and interviewing him was one of the highlights of the whole experience for us. So right now I am going to leave you with some of our clips from the interview with Brian Garner. Um, have fun watching the clips and I'll see you later. So language changes. Language changes. There is no doubt what a good usage book does and what I've tried to do in Garner, Garner's Modern American Usage is to, to give a snapshot of the language as it currently exists. Uh, any mistake, if it becomes common enough among 10-15% of the population, it will make its way into the dictionary. A, an example would be minuscule, which has always been spelled M-I-N-U-S-C-U-L-E. But people mistake minuscule with miniskirt and they think of the prefix M-I-N-I -I, and so they misspell minuscule M-I-N-U-S they make it M-I-N-I -I, as if that were a prefix to skule and it's it's not so that's just a mistake but you will find it in Merriam-Webster's 11th Collegiate Dictionary as a as a non-etymological spelling which is what we would traditionally call a mistake it's quite fine to begin a sentence with Ander but not for third graders because they want to do every sentence that way, but third graders cannot understand if you tell them don't begin a sentence with and or but for now, but later if you become a really good writer and a published author, you're going to want to begin 10 to 20 percent of your sentences with conjunctions. They can't follow that. So third grade teachers tend to say don't begin a sentence with a conjunction. In the world of affairs, in the world of business, in the world of law, in the world of uh, even academia, credibility depends on using language effectively.